everybody. Uh, I haven't live streamed in a while. I actually have been absent from YouTube for a while. For about three weeks or so. But that's because I got a new dog. And a lot of other things that just kind of have happened. But anyway, this is Back to the Future with the game. Uh, let's get right into it. <laughs> Wait, what? Select an episode. What? There's like so many episodes. Oh wait, no, no, never mind. There's only like five. Okay, well, I guess we're going to do number one. Does that say JC Penny? Oh my gosh, that does say JC Penny. Oh no, J. P. Penny. Okay. Okay, new game. Whoa! 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 What's going- What? Okay. Wait, okay, subtitles on. Pop-up. Goal pop-up. Sure. Hunt levels do sweet music down voices effects Okay Okay, I guess let's Oh that's why it didn't Yes sure go before exp before we begin, would you like to see notifications when Modi has a new goal? Why not? Oh wait, Modi as in like Modi McFly? Okay, sorry, I'm um I'm a star. All right, I'm ready. Is this Modi McFly? I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. Dad? You got that thing hooked up to the car? What? That is the same car yeah, okay. that yeah. we just got in GTA. Like a month ago. That is insane. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! Hi! Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ah, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine! Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out!
Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's... Mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inverted. Um, Doc, shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? Uh, Doc? Hey, wait, hang on, I'm gonna, like... I'm gonna see if I can tone off these, these like, yeah, cause those are kind of getting annoying. Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Marty McFly! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and... Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Holy crap, I'm late. Nah. <laughs> Back to the future, the game. Wahaha. <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be interesting, I can already tell. It's about time, episode one. If he ever singles you up, if he never super enough. <laughs> Excuse me, Einstein. Ah! Oh! I I love the fact that they named him Einstein. Lead program Randy Tardio. Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. 
Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Select items on the lab, make sure they don't, make sure they didn't leave anything dangerous lying around. Well, I miss Einstein. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Oh, I keep on put Let's make some noise. Where did we walk so funny? Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. <gasps> It is Marty McFly! Okay, I'm sorry. I swear I'm done. Okay, let's hey, try to talk Biff. to them. Oh, hi, Marty. Um, of Hill Valley. I'm looking for something, uh, in particular. Yeah? Something valuable? Uh... Doc's not dead, you know. He's still around. Oh, really? Do you see him around here? What are you doing here? Well, I was as bummed as anybody to hear that the old nutcase had kicked it. He's not. But I'm not above picking through the remains. You know what they say. Don't look a gift horse in the butt. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, I'm having like a tough time. Okay. Let's Hey, let me. Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. D sorry, Marty. forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Okay, sorry. I, I'm, I'm just... I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Oh, 
Okay, Hill Valley. Doc's thing of Hill Valley. Which is all of this. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah? So? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? Nah, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I can already not stand this dude. Hey, Biff. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. Just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. Yeah, then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. I can't. I can already buy the notebook. I'll Hold pay me. you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. Uh, okay, never obviously. mind. Okay, obviously this Biff guy isn't gonna fucking handle it. Handle it all. Handle? Hand it! Oh boy, I can't speak. Oh look, he has something out of... Go over to Dad. Let's talk to Dad. He's dead. Doc's alive. Who's... I can't... Fight my own fight. I can fight my own fight. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know. Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. Right. 
Okay, obviously I'm not gonna get this notebook back from anybody, so... Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. Problem? Biff? He's got this... thing, see? And I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. He found it first, but... Oh. Well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. I'll yeah. keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. A five minute conversation with Dad. Okay. Must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> well, that smells like beef stew. Seems kind of empty without the courthouse. Hey, Biff. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh, Not enough. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. <sighs> uh, never mind. I can't get out of here. What does it say? It would take a pretty powerful force to knock that notebook out of Biff, Biff's grasp. I'll take, I'll beat that giant speaker packs a powerful punch. Once the objects at the sale is not part of Doc's bound escape. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. But we have to. Old, how did how did Maudie's guitar wind up at the sale? Gotta find the guitar. Doc didn't take any of these with him.
A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Are you sure you've got all your stuff out of here, Marty? Doc sure did love his Jules Verne. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. Look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc, where are you? By the way, I'm sorry that that took me, like, forever to do that. Doc? Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past, or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me?
tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right. Last Time Departed. Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on. Come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. A high heeled shoe in the Dolorean. Something smells fishy here. Maybe Einstein can make something of this kind of. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Yeah, because that helps me so much. Just a simple dog bone. Let me see. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. You light um Ah, okay. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something. <laughs> there we go.
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? One second. What do you think, Einstein? You think I should ring the bell? What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? So true. Yeah. I guess there's time for a quick game. Oh, I, I didn't mean to go in there. I mean, I meant to go in there, but like... Okay, now I'm ready. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! I'm no hooligan. Einstein brought me here. Who are you? I've got something for you. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. E. Strickland? You aren't related to uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? It's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't ya? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well... See, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Sorry, Einstein. Why didn't those things, those two things just started downloading? I thought that I had them both downloaded. Oh well. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. 
I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! <laughs> She is very, um, interesting. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Ms. Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Okay, like where am I gonna fit then? I can't leave now. Miss Strickland's my only hope of finding Doc. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on the. You! It's spelled with a U. You illiterate vandal! <laughs> this crazy old lady is funny. Okay, wait. How do I? Where do I? Where can I? There's like nowhere to uh, fit. Miss Strickland. Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Ay, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that? Tim Tim! <laughs> wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? A video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? 
This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Um... I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! <laughs> okay then, uh, let's find... What am I looking for? I told you not to touch those! Edna lost her shoe during the age of... Prohabitant. When an illegal drinking establishment burned down, what went up in its place? You're looking for a date. You'll find it on a building. Miss Strickland lost that shoe the day the speakeasy burned down. But when was that? Excuse me, Miss Strickland. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. Okay, this is... Okay, we need to figure out when the speakeasy... when the speakeasy burned down. But... That tea's never gonna boil. <laughs> Is that... Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <coughs> Miss Pretty Whiskers? I know I'm probably getting annoy annoying because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Really? What are these? My editorial trophies! Cat Lovers Quarterly? It's legitimate journalism. Radiator.
Man, she keeps it hot in here. Ah. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. I don't need to fake a tea whistle while she's in the kitchen. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Brown mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Firm announces plans for Lone Pine Mall. Peabody Ranch to be rezoned for commercial development. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Yeah, that's peculiar. The water still hasn't come to a boil. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. Clint Eastwood plunges to death on runaway train. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. I remember the flames. That's what you get with these cheap, foreign-made kettles. But trying to find an American one nowadays... <sighs> Would you mind if I stepped out for a minute? I, I just remembered a video I've got to return. Do you have to go? I get so few visitors these days. But... And I'd hate to have to tell my brother, your vice principal in charge of discipline, how rude you were to me. <laughs> Especially with graduation coming up and all. <sighs> I guess I'm stuck here for a while. <sighs> Miss Strickland lost that shoe the day the speakeasy burned down. But when was that? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't want to record them right now. Strickland? Don't let me keep you from your business. This is like getting, uh, like, irritating because I don't know what to do. <laughs> um. Oh. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Nineteen forty two. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? 
I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. That tea's never gonna boil. I'm not leaving until I find Doc somewhere in those newspapers. Oh yeah, now since I know where to- Ah! Okay. Surely the water's boiling by now. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob... What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him! My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland, uh, let me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out, get out, get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Okay. And now we'll into it, and I got this. Finally. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right! Oh, Steinbeck! Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing. Right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? I now we really I've gotta turn on the time circuits first. Time circuits on. Flux capacitor, uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Okay, about time, dang. Oh! 
Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Young man? Excuse me, young man? Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Um... No, nah, not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Um... Sunny Quacket. Sunny Quacket, yeah. Yeah, that's my name. My name's Sunny Quacket. Sonny Crockett. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Crockett. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. While walking, press and hold the circle button to make Modi one. Ooh, can I go into here? I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How would Doc ever get mixed up in that? Um, no. Then get out, Bob. Dang, okay. Can't wait, if that's a speakeasy. Fine, Doc. Police station, we right here. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram.
I think I'll just talk to Doc from out here. Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Go back in time. Make a stand. Let's... Talk to gangsters. Let's... Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. This is all so much going on, and it's so, like, wow. What about the peace time? What about the space time, time continuum? How am I supposed to... You need to build a rocket drill. Where can I... Where can I find your younger self? Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Okay, go. The soup kitchen is right here. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. 
Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? <clears throat> would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just run back to the safe house. Excuse me. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Okay, can I use the phone, mister, mister? Let's see. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ooh, may I say his calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Kitchens for management only, rummy. Whoa! Ahem. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Okay, now let's go to the courthouse. Which is across the street. Oh, just go through the park, I guess. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Young Doc's in the courthouse. I hope I'll be able to recognize him. Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, um, uh, Sonny Crockett. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. I don't need to go in there anymore. Hello? No solicitors! Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work.
So Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Mm, now if H stands for the one-dimensional harmonic constant later, then naturally H to A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? Of RM. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Crockett, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! I don't need to go in there anymore. Harmonic. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Emmett, uh, about Don't your... say it! Or do we take H to stand for Hermitian line operator? But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer, uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Emmett, uh, about don't your... say it! Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newton... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. 
The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. Emma won't give you the time of day. Perhaps if you two had something in common. What's Emmett's muttering? What's Emmett's muttering? What's Emmett? What's Emmett muttering to himself about when he thinks you're not listening? Emmett's scientific problem of gibberish testimony, but they're someone who can make sense of them. Oh. Let's go and see. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, let's go and see where Mr. Um. Okay. Dak! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we save me from a grisly death in 1931. Well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him, but right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What 
does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. I better not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. Gonna be the inverse. Inverse. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Damn it. Uh, about your. Don't say it. Take H to stand for committing a lineup. H to the A. Mm. Now, if H stands for what? <laughs> a one dimensional harmonic constant. Party. There. 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 Later then, naturally, in each cube, hey, multiply by the inversion of H has to come out less than quick piece of value of A, right? What am I missing here? Oh, Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Damn it. Uh, about Don't your... say it! Oh, no. How do I? This is like getting annoying. Just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. <sighs> Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your. Say it. I do this and then I do this. And then it says equal to A's expectation value. Only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Damn it. Uh, about your say it. Equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's new. But how many newtons are required? At the tap 
of the top of the screen and the goal. Why can't I? This is getting annoying. I'm trying to like. Or do we take eight? H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I, oh. Mm, now if H stands for one, the one dimensional. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I, oh. oh. Okay, I think I have later then naturally each two a multiply by the inversion of h has to come out less than expectation value oh think emmet think h to the a multiplied by the inverse of a h to the a multiplied by the inverse of a i oh, oh. or do we take h to stamp a permitting line operator Oh, think, Emmett, think. No. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. Okay. Hmm, I think I've done this enough. Acceleration is reduced by the inverse of... See if I can get the thing now. Doc will flip when he hears his own voice. Yeah, no. Psst, Doc! Morty! How goes the escape plan? So, Doc, does this ring a bell? A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. 
So... It'll be fine. What was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Okay. I'm aware you're probably getting very annoyed because I keep on doing this stuff. Oh, there he is. I'm gonna wait here. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket-powered drill? Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh, it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. Einstein, of course! Because he was a patent officer just like you! This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. Wait, hang on a second. I'll be right back. I think that my...
mom actually like actually like wanted me to watch the talks while she was right back. Oh wait, I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Um meh. Okay, uh, I'm back. Um, I think my mom took all the dogs. It's also like six here. <laughs> I've been doing this for about two hours. Uh, let's get back. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Or my name isn't Sonny Crockett! Yeah! Nice bike. Huffy? Uh, Huffy? I'm not Huffy. I'm passionate. Passionate about justice, safety, law, and order. Uh, n never mind.
back! Your younger self needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Well, that could be a problem. I know, we're both underage. Underage, nothing. It's 1931 and alcohol's been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. Um... What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. What's the story with this kid tanning jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. Hang in there, Doc. Okay, now I'm gonna go and get... Now I'm gonna go and find... Edna. I'm gonna ask Edna about... Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Crockett. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? You could meet in the speakeasy, the one that got bombed last Wednesday. Now wouldn't that be poetic irony? But I'm not sure the building is structurally safe. I got a book. Oh? Where? I don't 
don't know where to go now. I think I have to go in here. A hey, cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on Earth are but a shadow. Actually, I won't be born for about 40 years. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Could I have a bowl of soup? We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? What kind of soup is this? It tastes like... scroll a ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Giving the soup a little heat, maybe? Why, is it getting cold? No, I, I mean, like chili powder. Muy caliente. Oh, bit of a tough guy, huh? Actually, I like it spicy, too. But it's gotta be edible for the common folks. <laughs> Come on, a little dash isn't gonna kill anyone. Aw, oh, heck. You got moxie, kid. Let's spice it up a bit, shall we? Kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Let me try. And... Nah.
I don't think so. Maybe not. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Not sure what that... After all the trouble I went through getting this thing, there's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. I love my dad and grandpa, but I'm kind of happy I get my looks from Mom. Brown Estate, Klondike 51038. I need to get this subpoena into Arthur McFly's hands, so young Doc will have the time to help me bust old Doc out of jail. Lizzie. What? What? Why, you brought home food? Okay, hang on one second. I gotta. I don't know. Help me, please. I don't know what to do. Okay, let's try and let's. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... One second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get my food. And I'll be back.
Okay, let's put some, um, pause. Parsley? Oh, yeah. It might help to, uh, compliment the mellow flavor of the cabbage. Compliment the mellow... What are you talking about? Trust me. Hmm. You might be on to something, kid. Let me see what I got. Need any help? Not sure what that Not sure what that Not sure what that Not sure what that I'm just gonna go out here. Not sure what that Why? Why don't aren't you not, not sure. sure what that I'm getting annoying. Need any help? Not sure what that Not sure what that Not sure what that. Not sure what that. Not sure what that. Not sure what that Not sure what that I don't want to record them right now. After all the trouble I went through getting this thing, there's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Doc's notebook doesn't belong to him. Okay, actually, it does belong to him, but not yet. In any event, it's probably a really bad idea to give him a book full of all the things he hasn't invented yet. I don't think that picture is going to do anything but confuse people. Need any help? I'm 
confused. I don't want to mess up my picture of dad like that. I don't want to mess up my picture of dad like that. Not sure what 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 that. I think I'm gonna cut off here because I've been doing this for two hours and I also have to eat. So yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.